identify as an opportunity to optimize the shape and mass of the needle bar link. He defines the SOLIDWORKS dimensions of interest as parameters and selects them in the new parametric design study in 3D experience. With goals of minimizing mass and stress, the best design alternative is identified for him. With a couple clicks, he generates the alternative design so he can perform additional analyses and update the SOLIDWORKS assembly with the optimal part model. To evaluate how long the link will last, Adam creates a durability analysis case and defines the fatigue loading. The results identify where and when the link will fail first. But how can he increase the life without changing the geometry? He modifies the surface finish in the weak areas only, which minimizes the amount of manufacturing necessary to create a long-lasting part. All of Adam's work is managed and automatically backed up on 3D Experience. Furthermore, he doesn't need to spend time creating reports of his simulations. Since all the data is on the platform, the details can be easily viewed in 3D in a web browser. Comments, notes, and changes can be shared with other stakeholders in the same cloud-based environment, streamlining communication throughout the organization. And this rapid product development and validation doesn't stop at structural analyses. Take on fluids, plastics, electromagnetics, and motion studies as well. How will you expand your horizons with advanced simulation and 3D experience works? Validating product performance, reliability, and safety does not have to wait until a physical prototype. You need answers at any time during the product development process so you can make better informed decisions faster. The simulation roles of 3D Experience Works give you world-class multi-physics analysis tools coupled with cloud computing and unified on a single collaborative environment. For many products, physical testing is a necessity However, with multiple design iterations, revisions, and testing scenarios, this real-world validation becomes very expensive. To optimize these costs, products are tested virtually with the same real-world conditions. Connecting SOLIDWORKS to the 3D Experience Cloud Platform enables you to rapidly iterate and validate as you go, and design the best performing products before a physical prototype is ever made. Structural analysis like this is common to discover product issues early. Track metrics like durability, user comfort, even manufacturability of formed metal components. Industry-leading Abacus technology makes it possible for you to reach these next-level validations. And since the results are stored on the cloud, you can easily share and review from anywhere without spending time publishing a printed report. But product performance relies on so much more. Simulate fluid flow to assess hydrodynamic effects. Couple external fluid forces with structural analyses to help ensure everything will work right the first time. Evaluate the manufacturability of plastic injection molded parts, leveraging an included material database of thousands of supplier plastics. And virtually test electromagnetic components for their performance, reliability, and safety in harsh environments. Simulating these multi-physics scenarios on the 3D Experience platform streamlines the validation process by keeping everyone in sync with the single source of design data. And alternatives to the product design can be easily explored and optimized. Compare and rank different designs and variations based on key performance indicators, whether that be the electromagnetic performance, operating thermal conditions, structural integrity, durability, and more. The ability to run these simulations on the cloud is included, so you can leverage high-performance computing to get your results faster and free up your local hardware. Exceed your customers' expectations. Satisfy industry requirements and regulations. And build your optimized product right the first time, all on a single platform and connected with SOLIDWORKS. Structural, fluid dynamics, plastic injection, electromagnetics, even kinematics. What's on your horizon? Be ready to take it on with 3D Experience Works.
Connecting SolidWorks to advanced simulations just got a lot easier with 3D Experience Works. Adam has an existing simulation study to validate the crank components of this sewing machine. While a linear static analysis and SolidWorks simulation provides good insight into the structural integrity, Adam needs more capabilities provided by the 3D Experience platform to solve for the dynamic response from the inevitable needle break. Some of the sewing machine components are defined with custom materials and they need to be created in 3D Experience. To automate this task, Adam imports his custom SOLIDWORKS material library. This eliminates the need for the time-consuming and error-prone task of creating materials manually. In these new material objects, the SOLIDWORKS simulation material properties are maintained and converted to Abacus multi-physics properties. These are leveraged to solve for additional real-world phenomena. For the case of the needle break, Adam only needs to add damage properties. Back in SOLIDWORKS, Adam has access to the centralized 3D Experience material library so he can ensure he's defining the correct materials. Additionally, when he transfers the simulation study to the platform, the materials, along with the loads and boundary conditions, are automatically mapped to the newly created structural simulation. With this, Adam can easily extend his simulation workflow. Adam builds on top of the simulation by adding a new procedure with an explicit dynamic step so he can solve for the needle break and the response in the sewing machine crank. To reduce the calculation time and eliminate the need for Adam's computer, he runs the simulation with the included cloud license. The simulation can be monitored from any device with a web browser, so Adam can easily track the convergence and see when the results are available. While viewing the results, Adam identifies an opportunity to optimize the shape and mass of the needle bar link. He defines the SOLIDWORKS dimensions of interest as parameters and selects them in the new parametric design study in 3D Experience. With goals of minimizing mass and stress, the best design alternative is identified for him. With a couple clicks, he generates the alternative design so he can perform additional analyses and update the SOLIDWORKS assembly with the optimal part model. To evaluate how long the link will last, Adam creates a durability analysis case and defines the fatigue loading. The results identify where and when the link will fail first. But how can he increase the life without changing the geometry? He modifies the surface finish in the weak areas only which minimizes the amount of manufacturing necessary to create a long-lasting part. All of Adam's work is managed and automatically backed up on 3D Experience. Furthermore, he doesn't need to spend time creating reports of his simulations. Since all the data is on the platform, the details can be easily viewed in 3D in a web browser. Comments, notes, and changes can be shared with other stakeholders in the same cloud-based environment, streamlining communication throughout the organization. And this rapid product development and validation doesn't stop at structural analyses. Take on fluids, plastics, electromagnetics, and motion studies as well. How will you expand your horizons with advanced simulation and 3D experience works? Validating product performance, reliability, and safety does not have to wait until a physical prototype. You need answers at any time during the product development process so you can make better informed decisions faster. The simulation roles of 3D Experience Works give you world-class multi-physics analysis tools coupled with cloud computing and unified on a single collaborative environment. For many products, physical testing is a necessity However, with multiple design iterations, revisions, and testing scenarios, this real-world validation becomes very expensive. To optimize these costs, products are tested virtually with the same real-world conditions. Connecting SOLIDWORKS to the 3D Experience Cloud Platform enables you to rapidly iterate and validate as you go, and design the best performing products before a physical prototype is ever made. Structural analysis like this is common to discover product issues early. 
track metrics like durability, user comfort, even manufacturability of formed metal components. Industry-leading Abacus technology makes it possible for you to reach these next-level validations. And since the results are stored on the cloud, you can easily share and review from anywhere without spending time publishing a printed report. But product performance relies on so much more. Simulate fluid flow to assess hydrodynamic effects. Couple external fluid forces with structural analyses to help ensure everything will work right the first time. Evaluate the manufacturability of plastic injection molded parts, leveraging an included material database of thousands of supplier plastics. And virtually test electromagnetic components for their performance, reliability, and safety in harsh environments. Simulating these multi-physics scenarios on the 3D Experience platform streamlines the validation process by keeping everyone in sync with the single source of design data. And alternatives to the product design can be easily explored and optimized. Compare and rank different designs and variations based on key performance indicators, whether that be the electromagnetic performance, operating thermal conditions, structural integrity, durability, and more. The ability to run these simulations on the cloud is included, so you can leverage high-performance computing to get your results faster and free up your local hardware. Exceed your customers' expectations. Satisfy industry requirements and regulations. And build your optimized product right the first time, all on a single platform and connected with SolidWorks. Structural, fluid dynamics, plastic injection, electromagnetics, even kinematics. What's on your horizon? Be ready to take it on with 3D Experience Works. SOLIDWORKS simulation, FEA, CFD, structural simulation, thermal studies, fatigue analysis, linear and nonlinear. These are all words that have stuck in the vocabularies of SOLIDWORKS mechanical engineers and analysts for, I don't know, decades now. And in 2023, SOLIDWORKS users have more choices than ever when it comes to stepping up their simulation games, both inside and outside of SOLIDWORKS 2023. You know, months ago, we debuted many new features from new three. And addition from that episode, if I might say so myself, was simulation. And part of the reason for that was that we were planning on doing a full review of how to simulate your SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD models in 2023 during this SOLIDWORKS Live episode. And it won't just be us doing it. So as you'll see in just a moment, we had the privilege today of being joined by structural analysts and engineers from the team over at Resident. So, you know, while our team over at SOLIDWORKS and Dassault System, you know, the print in 2023, we love to talk about software, right? But when it comes to simulation, 
uh, electromagnetic simulation, uh, plastics, uh, you know, injection molding, manufacturing simulation, and and every other area of our multi physics portfolio for SOLIDWORKS users. Um, you know, I, I would say it's always best and maybe preferable to hear from you on those matters when we can, right? You, you are community members who are out there making products, population problems, both simple and high end, that practically make the, the world go round. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our friends from Resumin. How are you guys doing today? Hi, Zing. Hi, Zing. Hi, Zing. Nice to meet you. It's today, uh, you guys are over in Peru. I'm here, sort of the, the magic of having these sorts of events. So, you know, my first question for, for anyone who is unfamiliar, can, can you tell us a little bit about what Resumen does and what your roles is at the company? Design, manufacture, and uh, for thirty years. Uh, fortunately, we are growing up uh, right uh, twenty percent each year. Uh, Resin Min is the third largest manufacturer of underground drilling uh, machines in the world. Uh, right now, uh, we, are we are close, close to. to units sold this year uh, over the years wow that's uh that's that's pretty incredible and so so for each of you if you could just introduce yourselves um and and your your particular jobs at resume as well just you know just tell us your names and and what you do there my name is fernando diaz i'm an uh, engineer manager for resume uh, Gustavo Manuel, please. Yeah, um, Manuel Morales, I'm structural analyst for the standard equipment. Mm, Gustavo Reaño, as a, as a Manuel, a structural, a structural designer. Okay, so we're pretty lucky, uh, everyone in the audience. Uh, feel free to submit questions, by the way, uh, if you're watching on YouTube or LinkedIn, uh, as I hope you have identified from the thumbnail and, and the graphics right from this episode. Uh, the team at Resume, we were very lucky to have them here. Uh, any questions you guys have in terms of how they're using simulation, how they're using SOLIDWORKS, um, you know, particularly their products. I'm, I'm sure these guys would be happy to answer. Um, but my, my next question for, for you guys over at Resume, your team's been using using SOLIDWORKS for, for many, many years, right? How How is your specific team using SOLIDWORKS software over the years? Uh, we have years wow. or so, or so uh, working first uh, with CAD, uh, SOLIDWORKS CAD, simulation, PDM, inspection, composer. Uh, right now we are de de developing uh, some projects uh, on SOLIDWORKS electrical and an experiment uh, with three three D experience platform as well. Uh, right now, with SolidWorks and simulation, we are producing uh, hundred thirty machines annually, uh, compared to forty five uh, that we produced five years ago. So uh, we are growing up with, with these tools. That's uh, that's 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 pretty uh, in incredible. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you guys have have adopted uh, so many parts of our portfolio, and we're we're very uh, grateful for that. Uh, just wanted to give a, a quick production note here. We're having uh, some audio issues here. Our production team is is working to resolve them. Thank you for those of you who have pointed that out. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, rest assured, we're working to resolve them. We'll have that all wrapped up shortly. Um, you know, so as we as we continue, right? You've adopted, like you mentioned, so many different ends of, of the SOLIDWORKS portfolio, stemming into uh, empowering yourselves with the use of three D experience, right? But and we'll talk a lot about that. But when it comes to your designs, you know, I, there is there is a lot of testing. I'm sure that you have to do. 
Um, what types of, of, of real world testing of your products do you have to perform and, and what are some of the biggest challenges there um, in terms of testing? I, I'm, sure, I'm sure it must be, be costly in some sense given your, your products. Yeah, uh, the first steps for our designs um, starts with our designers. The, mm -hmm. the designers starts with uh, some sketches, some parts, some uh, assemblies, and when they finish the the uh, the first conception of the of the parts, uh, that design comes to us. Uh, we're the analyst of the of the area. And uh, we start with um, uh, some initial tests about uh, uh, self-weight and maybe critical positions of the of the components and some interactions maybe with rocks, maybe with uh, uh, the driller. And then uh, in a, in a later steps, uh, we start with some. Um, more complex uh, kind of studies like uh, vibration because the driller or maybe uh, some uh, oscillations uh, in the movement of our equip uh, of our equipment or maybe some uh, fatigue uh, uh, cases that we can uh, see in uh, in a real operation of the machine so uh, uh, that uh, uh, those are uh, our main kind of analysis. Um, as you say, uh, as you said, uh, we have a lot of uh, challenges with uh, SolidWorks simulation. So uh, we start to explore another kind of um, of um, solutions, and we found in uh, 3D Experience uh, Simulia works um, very uh, accurate and fast uh, to make that, uh, that, that cases that are um, complex for us. It's, it's very interesting. You know, it's, it, it's, it, I, what, I, what I find very interesting about you guys is that you've mentioned you've used so many ends of the portfolio over the years. You know, you're, you're now using SolidWorks simulation and, and 3D experience uh, work simulation, simulation tools on the platform, you know, making uh, your designs uh, better. But kind of, of, of simulation, um, you know, how is, how is 3D experience helping you uh, with your SolidWorks models to, to sort of limit the the real, real world, world testing um, and to like we said make your make your you know and what types of simulations are you are you running there on your your SolidWorks files? Uh, we, we start to use uh, three experience simulia when uh, have uh, a lot of uh, degrees of freedom that uh, SolidWorks can't manage. Or okay. maybe the number of elements, or maybe the the time step of the of the analysis. Increase the time. Yeah. <laughs> when, when the when SolidWorks can't um, continue with the with the study, we uh, start to decide to to migrate to to three experience world work. Very very interesting. Um, well, I, I, I want to thank you, uh, Manuel, Fernando, and Gustavo. Thank you all so much for, for your time. Uh, we'll be talking a lot more um, about the work that, that we've done together uh, this episode. But uh, where, can, where can everyone go to learn more about, about Resumen and, and all the things that you guys are doing? Okay. As you know, technology is very increasing the time when develop new machines. So... So our website is constantly innovated. If you looking for it here, share share the information that you can find. Huh? So now we have uh, developed other other kind of the machines like uh, undergrounds and the uh, list is very important for us to develop uh, a, a good uh, a good equipment. Huh? You can find our new models that uh, Gustav was talking and our standard equipment in our website that is uh, resume.com. And there is a lot of information about us. And 
you can contact us if you need more information too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, everyone uh, check that works team send out a, a link to the, the that'd be great. Uh, everyone give a, a plus one here uh, to Manuel and Gustavo for taking, you know, again, they're structural analysts, engineering managers, uh, building mining equipment it can't be easy. Uh, might, you guys probably have simulations to run and uh, designs to finish. So uh, once again, really appreciate uh, us coming on. Sean, it's, it's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Sim, for the opportunity and the time. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Absolutely. Talk to you guys soon. Okay. So, hey, everyone, um, before we, we go on, we have a lot more of the show to get to here. We're just getting started. I just want to pause here to, to ask you, did you enjoy uh, that segment with the Resmond team? If you did, click the subscribe button or, or, or the follow button, you know, if you're, if you're on LinkedIn. It is by far the, the easiest way to, to get more content like that from, from our community here at, you know, their team, they've been solving, like you mentioned, some, some pretty sophisticated simulation problems. But if I were, if I were in your shoes, I'd, I'd probably be wondering, you know, how does some of these tools actually interface with, with SOLIDWORKS? You know, are, are, are these 3D experience simulation tools specifically, are they, are they really only for for high end problems? Are they really only for for me? If, for example, I'm I'm uh, making these huge mining rigs, right? And to help us with some of these questions, uh, I've invited on a friend of mine who really is is no stranger to to the SolidWorks live stage, and that's that's Michael Steves here. Hey, Michael. Sean, thanks for having me back. Good to see you. You're back, my 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 good old friend. Uh, so so Michael, we just we just heard from the Resmond team to kick us off right away, you know, right off the bat with some genuine use cases of how actual SOLIDWORKS users, again, they've been using the software for 15 plus years now, uh, like Fernando said, that how they're running simulations, big and small and on their products. And, and, and right now, I think this is a good section, like big picture, you know, let's, let's just clarify some main ideas when it comes to the simulation tools available to SOLIDWORKS users today, before we do some deeper dives in just a moment with another one of our colleagues, uh, Jose from Chile. So, firstly, you know, in, in question form, you know, what's what's the vision for for what we're we're bringing to the market when it when it comes to you know solvability of of different types of engineering problems today? Yeah, I think I would I could simply put it just by saying we're making world class simulation more accessible. It's more scalable than ever before for designers, engineers, and analysts, of course. So there's, I'll go further here. There's about seven points <laughs> I'm going to make here. So <laughs> stick with me um, because there's a lot of benefit, a lot of value of the range of technology that we have um, with our 3D Experience Works simulation portfolio. So first off, it's integrated into the design process. You can do more simulation-driven design or what we're also calling mod sim. So modeling and simulation. Mm -hmm. um, it's designer-centric. So you have a guided user experience throughout that process of taking your SOLIDWORKS model, setting up the loads and boundary conditions, and post-processing the results. Uh, it's comprehensive. So from simple, basic simulation studies to more complex and advanced simulations. And I think part of that brings me to the next point of multi-physics. So you can couple multiple domains um, together, get a holistic view of your product, how it's going to you know, behave in the real world before ever creating a physical prototype. Uh, it's on cloud. So this is reducing IT costs, infrastructure costs. You know, We can even solve simulations on the cloud um, in addition to storing the data. Um, it's scalable and it's scalable in a variety of ways from skill levels, you know, from that designer to analysts, uh, we can do different types of analyses throughout the product development process. And of course, the model size and complexity. So from, again, simple to very complex types of problems you're trying to solve. And then lastly, it's collaborative. So part of this being on the cloud, it's easy to access from anywhere. It's easier to share uh, the, the data, not only you know how something was set up, um, but also the results. 
So if, you know, when we talked to Resmond earlier, you know, we asked questions like, you know, who, how do you validating the setup and who's also taking a look at that? We can re- do that review all on the cloud, right from your web browser, whether if that's on your computer or even your phone. That's that's awesome, and and certainly you know we're we're going big picture now, and we'll we'll go into some of these points that you've made at a at a deeper level as we as we progress throughout this this simulation uh, themed episode for for SolidWorks users. But you know, again, I want to touch on one of the one of the points that that you got to, which was you know there's there's so much you, you can do right. This technology is obviously really impressive. There's a lot of capability, but I always try to bring in the voice of the audience and and saying and you know e- even questions I always say it it's questions that you you talk about with with SolidWorks champions right it, this idea that you know we see these these really flashy cool demos these these big customers like Resmin using it um, and I think about SolidWorks simulation the things that people are are using SolidWorks simulation for we we always talk about you could use it on simple parts simple use cases. The, these tools available on 3D Experience, you know, is, are, are, do they really only make sense given their power or capability for for the super high end use cases? Um, if someone were to say that, what what would you say to that? So yeah, we we do have a lot of amazing technology at Deso System, and yeah, with with the 3D Experience Works portfolio, we we break it into easy to digest pieces, and today we're just focusing on one of the five domains of 3D experience works, that being simulation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that kind of assumption of, okay, I want to simulate something, uh, ask yourself, well, what kind of simulation do you want to do? You know, we can break it down into fluids, you know, fluid dynamics, electromagnetics, uh, plastic injection, motion, and of course, structural, structural simulations. So in these subdomains, uh, you can find uh, different types of roles. Uh, and these are the roles that you would buy and use um, on the 3D Experience platform uh, that gives you access to these simulation applications. So in the structural subdomain, you know, there are actually multiple levels. So you'll find one of the roles being what's called structural designer. And there's structural engineer, and it ramps up in capability and what types of physics you can solve you know, up to durability and mechanics engineer. So each of these roles do provide different and unique capabilities, you know, from linear static to explicit dynamics, fatigue. Uh, so I invite you to go to my.3dexperience.3ds.com. You can take a look at kind of what, you know, more in depth of what you saw here. And of course, I invite you to you know, contact your reseller to understand more about these uh, capabilities and how they can match up to, you know, your needs. And and similarly, you know, along this same thread, you know, someone someone might also be be asking and thinking, right? When we think simulation in a solar sense, a lot of times we're thinking about uh, add-ins, add-ins that go right inside the the software, and, and they might be thinking, hey, we already we already had simulation add-ins built directly inside of SolidWorks that you could bring in. Um, you know, why not why not continue building? Some of these simulation tools that that you've been talking about, um, you know that 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 work with with SolidWorks models and within SolidWorks, you know yeah, what's the what's the big idea there? Yeah, the the short answer is we're doing both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so, SolidWorks simulation continues to improve. You know, like you mentioned earlier, you know we we didn't have SolidWorks simulation twenty twenty three in the the what's new um, in the video you know, session that we had um, a month ago. So let's talk a little bit about that now. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're doing both. So let's talk a little bit about SolidWorks simulation. We'll also talk about uh, the 3D experience roles uh, that I mentioned a moment ago. And if you head over to SolidWorks.com slash what's new, uh, take a look at some of these simulation videos. So to name a few of the enhancements here in 2023, um, you can solve earlier simulations much faster. You know, we have some additional contact penalty stiffness settings. So, for example, you know, we see almost 50 t- 50% faster run times, um, like in this study. You know, we also improve uh, our under constraints uh, body detection so that you can detect issues in the study setup before you ever click the run button. And we've expanded the linkage rod connector functionality. 
So this helps us simplify complex assemblies uh, with minimum impact on accuracy. So, and if you're a SOLIDWORKS simulation user now in 2023, it's easier than ever uh, to use your existing SOLIDWORKS simulation studies um, and bring those over. So it, not only the study, but also the materials. For example, we can add mm. abacus, multi-physics properties to your pre-existing SOLIDWORKS materials. That also gives you, know, you a centralized material library on the platform. And you can be confident you know, inside SOLIDWORKS. When you apply material, you're applying it from that centralized material library from the platform. So it's the first material, it's the right material um, to find it the first time. And when you transfer the SOLIDWORKS simulation study over to the platform, it just takes a couple clicks. Uh, you can continue to build um, the simulation by adding components, analysis cases, you know, some of the unique uh, solver capabilities that we have. And of course, being able to solve the simulation on the cloud, freeze up your local machine. You can shut down your machine while it's solving, check on the status on your phone. And with all of this, you know, that, that cloud license um, is included, being able to solve on, on the cloud is included with these roles and the associativity of that SOLIDWORKS model remains. So as you make changes to the model, everything's kept up to date, everything is in sync. Um, and like in the case where we are breaking this needle, something where we actually have elements fail, components break apart, one of the unique capabilities that we have in addition to the general contact uh, capability that we have with that abacus technology. Um, all of this is on cloud, it's all stored, automatically backed up. Uh, making it easier to share that uh, data, you know, throughout the organization. Um, and yeah, right from your web browser. So faster, it's easier to communicate and, you know, keep all of those changes throughout the design process in sync. That's really interesting. And so many crucial points you just made, right? Solver simulation is still a very vi viable tool. Um, it's still being developed. We're making, I love the under constrained bodies enhancement. I think that's so cool. Something that I've been looking at for a long time. Uh, but also, you know, it, it, this, this idea that the, the sort of 3D experience work simulation tools are disparate or disconnected from SOLIDWORKS just isn't true, right? It maintains CAD associativity. It connects even with SOLIDWORKS simulation in some ways you can, you can leverage that. Um, but also, you know, it, while there is a convenience of having simulation tools embedded inside of the interface of, of, of a software, like you mentioned, you're democratizing so many important things that matter today. You know, the, the, the ability to view results on a device centrally and, and sort of dynamically, um, the ability to free up, uh, not having to have a certain machine do a simulation and tying up your, your compute resources, which we'll talk about later actually in greater depth at a statistical level with, with Peter. Um, and so many other points you made, I think, really resonated. Um, so, you know, Michael, once again, thank you for, for jumping on. But uh, before you go, um, you know, I mentioned we have other streams here. We have we have other streaming series. We have Live Design. We have SolidWorks Live. We have Manufacturing Live. You actually did a, a simulation-based SolidWorks Live Design episode back in May this year, right? So t tell us, and, and we, you can see all of these replays on YouTube today. Uh, what can our audience, what can viewers see with that episode if, if they didn't get a chance to see it back in May? Oh, and that's what's so great about that live design program that we have is that's where we get into the weeds. Yes. A lot of the, the how-to, <laughs> the picks and clicks. Um, and I'm going to give you, I know I've given you guys a lot of websites um, already. I'm going to give you one more. If you go to lidboss, L-I-D-B-O-S-S dot solidworks dot com. Uh, we put together an amazing story with one of our uh, customers and a product called Lid Boss. And we went through the design to, you know, prototype to physical real world process um, with that Lid Boss design. And the, the part that I focused on was the simulation. One of the challenges that we had was the packaging and how to update the packaging as the design was being changed. And we had to overcome some complex material behavior, you know, with cardboard packaging. Um, and styrofoam and you know things like this. We're able to overcome those challenges with the Abacus technology on the 3D Experience platform um, with the design rules that I mentioned earlier. So how we went from that SOLIDWORKS model into the platform, setting up uh, the simulation study and throughout, take a look at that live design episode. I go behind the scenes um, of what you see on that lidboss.solidworks.com website 
so that you can understand and start to see of what these motions look like uh, using this fantastic technology. That site's pretty awesome. It, 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 if you guys haven't checked it out, I definitely recommend it. Um, even if you know you're looking to to get insights on how, like you mentioned, it's an actual customer use case with LidBoss and uh, plastic part design considerations. There. there, there's so much there that you could take advantage of. You know, whether it's learning about new technology, new ways of doing things, uh, like like Michael mentioned, uh, lidboss.solworks.com. Uh, hey, Michael, I, I guess I'll, I'll probably see you soon. Um, I think we might be seeing each other. Uh, in a couple weeks as we work on maybe some new skits. Uh, uh, yeah, there's some fun stuff coming up, but definitely maybe. a good plug for 3D Experience World and I yeah, hope to see you in Nashville. Yeah, man. All right, talk to you soon. All right, thanks, Sean. All right, everyone. So as we progress throughout this episode, plus one for Michael, plus one for for Resumen. Um, and speaking of Resumen, you know, as the the thumbnail and the graphics package all together uh, for, for this the simulation uh, live, so the simulation solvers live episode indicate we we were super happy uh, to hear not only how simulation tools can apply to everyone in 2023, but how the team at Resumin has used them to solve some really really neat problems over the years with their money equipment. Uh, so just like myself uh, and Michael. You know, both of us, you, you, you just heard from Michael there. Uh, we have industry process consultants all over the world. And one of our industry process consultants, Jose, is actually based in Chile. And uh, he's been personally guiding Resumen through their SOLIDWORKS and, and simulation journeys for, for many years now. You, again, you heard it from Fernando, 15 plus years. Uh, and I had the chance to catch up with Jose to chat about his experiences with with resume actually earlier this week. So uh, let's let's take a quick look at that if we could. Jose, welcome to SolidWorks Live. Now, understandably, the team at resume has needed to perform structural simulations on their SolidWorks parts and assemblies many times over the years. And as a technical expert on our products, talk us through how performing structural simulations with the help of 3D Experience was a huge difference maker for their team. Hi, John. First of all, thanks so much for the invitation to this SolidWorks Live episode. I would like to start talking about how was the beginning of this fantastic simulation journey with Resemin 12 years ago. At that time, we needed to start with basic simulation on parts in order to validate stress and strain on different components. In the last five years, Resemin had to simulate more complex behaviors on large assemblies. So 3D spinning simulation tools were critical for facing all the simulation challenges, such as FOPS and ROPS test and cloud computing for large models. Finally, we start using the ModSim approach for integrating the design and simulation teams under the four main classes modeling and simulation, process optimization, requirement, project management, and collaboration. Uh, okay, and, and what about some other types of, of common problems like, um, you know, thermal and, and, and fatigue problems? You know, ger generally speaking, how does 3D experience simulation help solvers users with these sorts of problems? We are working now with fatigue challenges. All resume equipment are under cycle loading, not only for drilling operation, also for bouncing excitation when the machine has to travel many miles into the mine to get the operation site. So 3D spinning simulation can face all the different challenges about fatigue for high and low cycle cases. Predicting fatigue life damage for engineers make the right decision on the component geometry, reducing material cost and validating the component operation life. Finally, thermal studies will be included shortly because we need to simulate thermal effect propagation in the batteries and engine occasions. And Jose, finally, regarding the, the 3D Experience platform end of things, is it is it just a place to potentially run simulations? Uh, how does how does having solvers and results available online actually help 
actual designers and engineers versus uh, simply running studies locally and um, I, you know making say say reports as as needed on those results. Oh, great. This is a key question when talking about the 3D experience mod sim approach and how designer, analyst, and the entire company can leverage the power of collaboration tools, making all the simulation results available for everyone, anytime, anywhere, from any device. So that means you can access results from your Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, or any internet browser. This is possible because all the models and the results are storage on the cloud. Finally, 3D Experience Platform is the unique market platform that allows companies building the third digital twin, including not only advanced simulation capabilities, also full CAD cloud design tools, mechatronics, multi-physics, and multi-scale solutions. All right, well, thanks a lot, Jose, for checking in with us during your busy schedule over there in Chile. Hope to see you at 3D Experience World. So it was awesome, awesome to hear from, from Jose. And, and it's interesting to hear, I would say just candidly, you know, some, some of the different types of problems that, that Resumen, again, Jose worked, as you just heard, very intimately with, with Resumen. But hearing about the different types of problems that they're going to aim to address soon, you know, with with thermal, I guess particularly, you know, with this episode, we've we've traveled in a way to Peru, to the U.S., to Chile, and now now we are headed to to Canada. So next up, we have another member of our other another team member of ours, Peter, uh, who'll be talking to us about how we can expand our SolidWorks simulation horizons through fluid simulation, electromagnetic simulation, and much, much more. Peter, how's it going? Good. How are you doing, Sean? Very well. So Arturo in the chat uh, just said, can we see some fluid simulation? We talk about that. Uh, so right on cue, I don't know you, Arturo, personally, but you asked a very relevant question at a very particular time with Peter jumping on here. The <laughs> so I thought that was be better fun. for that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so appreciate, appreciate that. Uh, definitely, definitely some, I don't know, unintended foresight maybe. Um, but, but Peter, we've, we've spoken about structural simulation tools, right. And, and beyond that, that, that SOLIDWORKS users can, can take advantage of in an associative way, right. That stays connected with their CAD models. And like Michael said, even some of their potentially some of their preexisting study data, um, mm -hmm. you know, but to expand on that, Let's let's touch on like like Arturo said. Let's let's touch on fluid simulation and and electromagnetic simulation um, and, and what we're seeing heading into 2023. So so firstly, can can you talk about the the fluid simulation capabilities and and how are they different? You know, I think it's important to, to differentiate here. How are they how are they different than what you might find say within the the SolidWorks flow simulation add-in that that can be embedded inside of SolidWorks. Definitely. I, I can help shed some light on that. Um, our fluids offering on the 3D experience platform is called Fluid Dynamics Engineer. That's what the role is. And to start with, there's some very good um, uh, sort of broad physics coverage that we do cover there that's, that will help our customers tackle most mainstream CFD applications. So I, I won't read through everything on this slide, but um, we can handle your steady state and transient flows, laminar and turbulent flows, um, Newtonian, non-Newtonian, um, single or multi-phase flows, multi-species flows as well, um, and as well as free surface modeling. You can see the sloshing going on um, within that little tank in the bottom of the screen, both real life and our prediction of it in FMK. Um, so at first glance, these capabilities, they're great, but there does seem like there's, there's quite a bit of overlap to what you can also do in SolarWorks flow simulation. So what some of the differentiators are, are, are some key technologies that make FMK different. And one of these, um, let's start with meshing. Our mesh capabilities within the fluid dynamics engineer role are great. Um, they're a little bit different. When, when we get into SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, it uses what we call a structured Cartesian mesh. So you have all of these essentially cubic mesh cells that some are fluid, some are solid, but some of them are partial cells that actually represent both. And the way you sort of capture boundary layers or what's happening at the boundary between fluids and solids are some internal calculations. 
in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. Um, in the fluid dynamics engineer role, we use what we call a body fitted mesh. So we, we don't have these partial cells. We're actually wrapping all of the fluid cells around the solid cells. And um, you can see in this heat exchanger video um, that's playing right now, what that lets us do is really accurately capture boundary layers. We can wrap mm. these thin multiple layers of boundary boundary layer elements around these heat exchanger tubes. And that lets us really capture what's going on at that boundary layer, both in terms of the fluid flow as well as the uh, uh, thermal and in heat transfer that's happening between solids and fluids. And not only do we have this capability to do body fitted meshing, we also automate it very nicely. We use what we call an automated hex dominant mesh. And that lets the user create some very detailed high fidelity meshes without a lot of um, uh, manual interaction. And we also um, have some amazing other capabilities there, such as the turbulence modeling and um where oops sorry i'm getting a little bit of an echo um so with the turbulence modeling where in solidworks flow simulation we use a k epsilon model uh, primarily for our uh, uh, turbulence model within fluid dynamics engineer we have access to the three most widely used turbulence models so um to start with the shear stress transport k omega model and this is very good for internal and external flow and as well as thermal applications heat transfer applications which a lot of our customers do now we also have an improved k epsilon model what we call a realizable k epsilon model um, for internal flow applications as well as another solver or another turbulence model called the uh, spallard Al almeris solver specifically for external aerodynamics and aerospace applications and um that's a differentiator versus our existing solidworks flow simulation product and one of the other nice things about this is the way we handle wall treatment we use what we call an intelligent near wall modeling approach which um lets us capture a, a basically you don't need to be an expert on wall functions or how to handle wall functions the software based on how you've set up the model the turbulence model you're using um, uh, your mesh settings near the wall it will automatically choose the correct wall functions for you so um it really goes into the fact of having more capabilities but as, as well as making it easier for our users to to set up their models without needing to be a fluid dynamics expert and the final thing i'd mentioned sean um in terms of differentiators is the ability to use cloud high performance computing resources when you need it a lot of these flow simulation models cfd models in general can be quite large you can deal with some very large meshes and where solving locally is is great sometimes you need more speed and rather than having to to invest in your own high performance computing resources um you have access to the Dassault public cloud and what we can do here out of the box you can use up to 16 cores on cloud at no additional charge and that will let you run some models quite quickly but if you're running these huge problems or need <clears throat> uh results very quickly you can use up to 144 cores at the same time on cloud and then and that's done with our sim credits or sim tokens so um the great thing about this you don't need to manage it yourself you're not worried about the purchase cost and the maintenance costs all those sort of hidden costs of maintaining high performance infrastructure in-house um it's all taken care of behind the scenes and it's just essentially an extension of the capabilities you have on your your desktop computer it's super interesting. Every time I, I see the amount of cores that are available, um, I, I always kind of chuckle because I'm like, I don't know what I would do 144 cores. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's interesting. We'll, we'll get, I think we can get to that a little bit later in terms of example. Because I think, I think for a lot of us, and I know this, this came up, this has come up in the past whenever we, we've talked with, with, with analysts, you know, it's like, what are the actual tangible benefits of that? What does it look like when you actually run these studies? Uh, you know, what are, what, how, how did the benefits scale um, if they do? And, and, and so we could talk about that, but what, um, you know, does, from Chris, uh, does, does the fluids does the package fluids on package simulation have, have, have electronic specific have capabilities like SOLIDWORKS flow simulation? Um, yes, it does. We do have things like dual heating and two resistor models that, that we can use within the uh, fluid dynamics engineer role. Cool. And thanks, thanks for the question, Chris. Arturo, it, once again, thank you for, for your question as well. Anyone else has questions, feel free to put them in the YouTube chat where, where certainly you can see me look off to the side. I'm, I'm just kind of scanning for, for any questions that, that you guys might be entering in there. 
Um, so thanks, thanks for that overview, Peter. Another another area I mentioned at the top when I first introduced you, uh, you know, another area that, that I think SOLIDWORKS users might be really interested to hear about are electromagnetic simulation capabilities. Uh, so unlike, you know, talking about flow simulation, SOLIDWORKS simulation might be a little bit new uh, to SOLIDWORKS users, at, at least in terms of at an interface level. You know why did why did we add this to to our simulation portfolio for SOLIDWORKS users and and how does this work? Well, that's a great question, Sean, and it is new to the the SOLIDWORKS um, uh, sort of portfolio offering, and there's a reason for that. There's some things that are really driving um, connectivity today, and mm -hmm. some of those things are um, things like the emergence of five G technology. Industry 4.0 and connected machines, um, and as well as on the the personal side of things or, or consumer side of things, the Internet of Things, things like smartwatches, um, connected refrigerators, connected washing machines, things like that, things that didn't used to be connected to other devices or to the Internet now are, and and that's happening things, more and more. Um, not not, not and, to cut you off there, but the, the things that we're practically surrounded by. I've, yeah, I've, literally every day, our, <laughs> our cell phones, our smartwatches, um, yeah. the amount of connected things has grown exponentially, yep. and it's going to keep growing exponentially. And the way these things communicate with each other is electromagnetic waves, and that's where the simulation comes in. If we could have a look at the next slide there. Um, so not only are we seeing this huge increase in connectivity, we also have um, a long established industries like the automotive industry, which is being disrupted by new electrical and electronic devices. So um, not just electric motors and electric drives for vehicles, but the amount of antennas, um, circuitry and elect basically electrical cabling inside today's vehicles is wild compared to where it was yeah. 10 years ago. <laughs> It's way different. Um, now, in addition to that, we also have specific um, increases in things like wearables. So Fitbits, yep. uh, smartwatches, um, as well as medical devices that emit um, electromagnetic radiation, uh, they now have to comply with these emerging bioelectromagnetic standards. So looking mm -hmm. at things like specific absorption rate and making sure that these devices are safe and not putting too much radiation into um, our bodies. And the reason we have an offering for this now is because a lot of these devices that I've just talked about are being designed in solid work. So sure. it's a natural fit to have a product that, that can analyze their performance. Absolutely. Um, it's super, super interesting. And I think we have we have some examples here, right? Um, just of, of different electromagnetic applications. You mentioned a bunch, but uh, just just at a visual level. Um, yeah, it is it is is clearly as we can see here on the screen, uh, all around us. And I know with those of us being uh, heavily device driven, uh, I know a lot of us are uh, in this field, we're all sort of generally in that sort of tech umbrella. Um, yeah, it, 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 it is not difficult to think of, uh, you know, these sorts of ways that uh, an electromagnetic tool and that, you know, that, that, that is essential, right, for, for a lot of the devices and how they've needed to evolve uh, to meet uh, natural demands uh, today. Um, so I, I guess one thing I, I know, I know you wanted to get into was just just how this, and I'm sure those of us at home are, are wondering, you know, how does this, how does this actually work um you know within what does that workflow look like if like you said a lot of these devices are made within solidworks you, you mentioned for example uh the amount of antennas that have to go into these devices uh what, what would a, what would a sample workflow look like um using the electromagnetic uh simulation solutions that that we have i think you have a clip right that, that we can look I at i do and just before we play that I, I do want to mention that um what we can do we have a huge range of applications within electromagnetics that we can handle but mm. specifically on uh, on antennas it's not just for um designing antennas we have a huge amount of capabilities around that but um a lot of these companies that are are putting antennas on existing devices um, uh, just to connect them to the internet, to turn them into smart devices, they're not designing the antennas themselves. They may be purchasing mm. an off-the-shelf antenna. And uh, so this is something I think will be really relevant to a lot of our customer base. So let's have a quick look at what that workflow looks like of how we would actually place antennas and evaluate their performance. Well, we have this model of an excavator and, and what we're going to do, we'd like to place a, uh, a Wi-Fi or a connectivity antenna on it. So 
What we'll do, we can start by opening up the, uh, we, we've saved the model into the 3D experience platform. We've now opened up inside uh, CST Studio Suite, which is, is the core of the electromagnetics engineer role. And we can place existing antennas here. We can go in, we can assign materials to the relevant parts of, of the, uh, the cab that uh, may actually affect the antenna performance. We'll define a far field monitor here just to, to be able to visualize the far field. And now we're going to save this to the 3D experience platform. So we've now set up this electromagnetic study for the antenna. We'll save it out. And on the cloud now, this is one of the great uh, things we can do. I and mean, that went by pretty quickly. But one of the drop downs we saw here as we started that running was we actually solved this with core uh, CPU cores and GPUs concurrently. And I'll touch on that in a minute, but we can then verify the antenna performance, look at those S parameters, and be able to visualize the far field. And that was all just being done in a web browser. So now that we've seen the far field back there in that sort of protected location down beside the exhaust pipe, um, we may want to move it further up, uh, somewhere where it's got a bit of a clearer range and, and less obstructed sort of view for the antenna. So we'll move it right on top of the cab. And same thing, we'll solve this now using 24 cores and four GPUs concurrently. So we get really fast solving ability here. And we can see that the S parameter there, um, the antenna uh, performance um, is, is fine. We can now do comparisons on them as well. And we can actually look at the far field differences. And right there, very clearly, we get a much better, stronger far field um, when we're placed up on top of the cap. But the issue with that, when we're up there, we're now suddenly exposed to damage. Um, these excavators move a lot of rocks and work around other equipment, so we may need to model some steel bars in there, sort of a protective cage, just to protect this from damage. Well, <laughs> when that happens, well, that could very potentially, if it's conductive mate uh, material um, uh, in that protective cage, you can affect the performance of the antenna. And we can very easily take advantage of that. So again, the model updates automatically. We're still linked to the SolidWorks model. So once we put those little protective bars in there, we'll just run it again. And then once it's solved, we can use the comparison tools again to look at the difference between the different far fields. And uh, we can see here on the right, there is a slight difference when we look at the far field. Now we're looking at the, uh, the electric field on the surface of the part. Mm -hmm. There is a bit of a difference, not a huge difference there, but we can make these kind of informed data-driven decisions by being able to see how both our existing product, the placement of the antenna, as well as protective structures all interact um, and affect our antenna performance. So that's just a, a quick overview of what an antenna placement workflow might look like for our customers. Super, super cool. I, while, while you were presenting that, Eric C. Uh, on YouTube said, electromagnetics engineer, uh, the, the role of the product you've been talking yeah. about is, is also a super tool uh, to do some signal, integ signal integrity on electronic circuits, exclamation point. So very ecstatic uh, about that. Again, <laughs> The, the, the people in the chat are, are almost predicting what I'm talking about. Seems like about it. <laughs> uh, and that's exactly what I was going to talk about next. Aside from antennas, um, one of the, the other great workflows we can do with the electromagnetics engineer role is looking at PCB designs. Mm -hmm. And um, if we can show the next slide, I can do a quick overview of um, uh, what our capabilities are in that PCB space. Now, to start with, we can do a full detailed import from any of the standards. EDA softwares out there, uh, Cadence, uh, Mentor, Altium, Zookin, etc. We can bring in the entire board and component uh, component layout directly. And once it's there, we can start running analyses on these, whether it's signal integrity analyses, power um, uh, power drop analyses, uh, power integrity analyses or electromagnetics compliance and emissions testing. If you have to comply with FCC regulations or EMC regulations, we can do that all um, within the same software package. And so we really have a connected sort of analysis route right from the board layout through to testing signal integrity, power integrity, and emissions. And one of the other really nice tools there is the ability to do thermal analysis as well. Um, because we bring in that detailed board layout, we can actually bring in all of the copper traces and vias uh, through a multi
multi-layered PCB, which and they're getting more and more complex. The way heat flows around these boards is crucially important. Mm. We can capture all of that within the same software. We have a full built-in FEA and CFD thermal solver within Electromagnetics Engineer, and you can actually link these to the electronic analyses. If you run an analysis on the PCB and you find the power loss density of your components, well, that power loss is is heat essentially it's power being lost to heat and that can be directly imported as heat sources into a thermal study so you can do these not just the electromagnetic analysis of the board but also thermal and structural analysis of the board all within one software and uh, i mentioned the cloud capabilities uh, before with the fluids role it's just as powerful for the electromagnetics engineer role as well I mentioned we we can take advantage of those um, uh, concurrent CPU and GPU solving. And just as an example, um, if we're looking at a, a signal integrity, power integrity analysis of this PCB board, um, we're going to use the, the time domain solver for that. And, and it's a fairly large mesh. It's not a huge mesh, but it's about 44 million mesh cells. Well, if I were to run this on my laptop, so a workstation laptop, but still a laptop, um, it would take almost four and a half hours to run. Four hours that's, and 20 minutes. That's six, six, using six cores, right? Yes, so that's using okay. six cores. Now, if I want to, using just the included out of the box functionality um, uh, with uh, Electromagnetics Engineer, I could run it with 16 cores on cloud and there's no charge for that. And I could now cut my solve time from over four hours to less than two hours. So we're cutting wow. it a little more than in half, but if I wanted to use the full power of the cloud here, so using credits or tokens, I could solve this with 24 cores and four GPUs concurrently. And we cut a, almost a four and a half hour solve down to 23 minutes. And that's <laughs> that's huge. That's that's over a 10 times improvement. We're, we're solving in less than 10% of the time using cloud horsepower. That's going to let our customers be able to iterate much faster, get those results quicker, run more analyses to find the optimal design, and be able to explore large design spaces in just a fraction of the time. So, Peter, that's that's how you use 144 cores. That's, that that's is really answer. how you do it. <laughs> Signal integrity, power integrity of PCBs would be a great use of how to use 144 cores or the coupled CPU GPU solving for sure. Very cool, and it's it's funny just just. Just to be very clear, uh, Arturo, Chris, Eric, uh, I don't know any, I'm sure you're all great. I do not know any of you personally uh, yet, I should say. Three Experience Worlds coming up, maybe I'll meet you there. Uh, they pretty much predicted the flow exactly of what you were going to talk about, which I find fascinating still. I can't, I can't get past that. That's um, while we're talking about 3D experience world, I, I did just want to mention if anybody, uh, anyone who is attending, um, please have a look for um, our antenna placement workshop. If placing antennas is going to be important for you or your business, um, uh, myself and one of my colleagues, Emmanuel LaRue, are actually presenting a hands on session at Solid oh, awesome. uh, uh, 3D experience world this year where customers are going to get to try this for themselves and actually get a hands on look at what antenna placement looks like. See, like that, that's one of those things. It, for those of you who have, who have been to 3D Experience World and have attended uh, one of those sessions uh, of, of that type, which is a hands-on session, basically what it is, is, is you go into, uh, you go into, it might be obvious, but you, you, or maybe it's not, you, you go into a room, there's, there's a bunch of machines right there, we, su we supply them, and you're able to talk to people like Peter and people that come from all around the world in one location, in February 2023, that'll be in Nashville. Uh, and you get to learn. Um, you get to try this stuff out. Uh, you get to learn from each other. You get to make connections. So uh, that that is one thing, you know, I would say over the past three years when we, we haven't been able to get, you know, in, in person and be able to do these sorts of, the, these conferences, these sorts of get-togethers that I think we've, we've um, you know, missed out on a bit. And I'm really excited to, to be able to take advantage of that. Um, you know, a couple you questions that came in, Peter, um, just looking at the chat here, uh, Shrijit, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name there. Um, uh, what is the what is the maximum element size uh, that can be given during the meshing? It's a pretty particular question. Um, that is, I would be happy to answer that offline. It, I, I believe it's going to depend on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, with it, there's probably some practical limitations in there, and and I may not be the the right person to to answer that question, but um, I would be happy to try and find an answer for it. Sure, and anyone else who's watching from our sim team in the chat, maybe check it out, uh, or 
Peter, like you said, even maybe a comment on on the YouTube, uh, you know, the YouTube link here. Uh, whenever you get a chance to to check that out. Um, but but thank you all for for, for your questions, uh, Peter. Before before we let you go, I talked to Michael about his his live design episode. You're you're new here at DASA System, but you have a ton of you know both at our partners and and our customers. Uh, but you're also no stranger already. You know you've 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 done a live design episode, right? You were on you're on live design not, not too long ago. I did that one a month ago or or something like that. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that long ago. What what can what can our viewers see again? These are all available on YouTube uh, right now on, on the Sowers YouTube. What can what can viewers see on on that simulation episode? So what we wanted to do was actually have a look at, at simulation entirely on the 3D experience platform, modeling and simulation. So mm. um, what we did, we actually, I, I modeled up a, we wanted to keep it relatable to the audience. So I modeled up a smartphone um, because everybody has one. It's something people can, can yeah, sure. kind of connect with. And uh, I modeled up just a quick dummy model of a smartphone and a cell phone case in one of our X apps. So X design, and that's our entirely cloud-based CAD design tool on the 3D experience platform. It's not quite as powerful as SolidWorks, but but there are a, a huge amount of capabilities in it and some really cool differentiators from SolidWorks as well. So we created some models entirely on the 3D experience platform. Um, I set up some simulations. We actually snapped the phone into a phone case. Again, something I, I think the majority of our customers have done. <laughs> look at the stresses in the phone case. Um, and then um, Shreyas then took that model and did multiple drop tests on it. So with that, we use something called the preloaded FEM functionality um, within the structural analysis tools on the platform. And it's, it sounds like a, a wordy thing, preloaded FEMs. All it means is we're taking the pre-stressed, pre-damaged mesh from mm -hmm. one study, basically the results of one study and using as the starting point for the next study. So we took this cell phone and we dropped it once and we saw some permanent damage and denting on it. And then we took that already damaged model and we dropped it again to see basically, uh, and dropped it again in a different orientation to see how much more damage we would get out of it. So um, it's a pretty cool look at not just how the design and simulation apps work on the platform, but also some pretty cool simulation that, that I think would be relatable to a lot of our users. So check it out on the uh, the Live Design YouTube channel. Um, and if you guys ever have any questions on that, feel free to uh, reach out to, to Shreyas or, or myself um, or comment on that video. We would be happy to, to see what you guys think of it. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's a very good point. Um, and, and you guys mentioned it when you guys did the stream. Um, when, when you were testing, uh, you know, the, the phone and the phone case, uh, being able to have, have a realistic starting point. Um, yeah, because it's, that's, that is often how that works, right? If you drop your phone, it probably is not, <laughs> probably it's not the first time you've dropped it. And yeah, no. it's, it, it's interesting to test it that way. It's, it seems more applicable, more relevant. Um, so yeah, Peter, once again, uh, you know, we, we've kind of circled the globe almost with, with this stream, but, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for jumping on and, uh, we'll, we'll see you in, in Nashville soon. See you in Nashville, and uh, thank you for um, uh, thanks for including me in this. I'm happy to be a part of it. So, um, thanks. Absolutely. All right, everyone. I hope you learned a lot about how you can simulate your SolidWorks models in 2023, moving forward on your way to creating the things that we want. Right, smarter, better, and and safer products. And if you, if you learned anything, anything at all. Uh, today that's that's been of value to you. Do us all a favor, do yourself a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button, hit that like button. And if you're curious about any of these solutions and Michael and, and Peter both mentioned it and, and you want to talk to someone, remember your your community and, and your value added reseller as well. That great resources. You know, be sure to reach out to your your VAR, you know, if you if you have any questions on capabilities. You know, this was a great primer, I think, of of the landscape of of the different types of problems you could solve. But I, I think we would all agree it's it's oftentimes just it gets to be a lot easier to talk to an actual person when when you get to a certain level of depth. But when it comes to our live streaming, we are not done this year on the live streaming side here at SolidWorks. So, you know, outside of one more live episode like this one next month, uh, we'll have more to reveal on that pretty soon. Uh, we have a few more live designs, like Michael said, like Peter said, you know, that's where we get in the weeds uh, with the software to 
to get to before the end of 2022. And tomorrow, Friday, is actually our next one here on YouTube. It'll be occurring at 12 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, uh, which is again Friday. We'll be talking about how to manufacture parts in 2023. So just like this episode today, the reality is there are lots of ways that companies like Resumin uh, can look to simulate SOLIDWORKS designs. And, and similarly, there are lots of manufacturing options today when you consider all the additive, you know, with plastics and, and metal, uh, subtractive and hybrid capabilities that we have. So we're going to have Noah Zeef and Chris McBain, two of my colleagues here on the tech side, uh, that will be going head to head uh, as our manufacturing experts here to guide you through how companies are looking at manufacturing their designs in 2023. You know, again, candidly, one of the things that I really like is that Chris and Noah both have, just like Peter, very diverse range of experiences. Uh, newer team members here at DS, but have a lot of industry experience. So they're very, very up to date on, on the latest trends. Um, but hey, I mean, what else, what else is going on here at Dasso System? What else is going he on here at SolidWorks? This is a, a great time of year, right? So, so for many of us, the holidays are upon us. And, and, and some of us actually got gifts very recently, the email uh, telling us that our technical sessions have been accepted for 3D Experience World, right? We've talked a lot about 3D Experience World already today. You know, we received so many, I, I saw the amount of submissions, we received so many submissions for SOLIDWORKS presentations from SOLIDWORKS champions and, and power users from around the world who are, and this is such a cool thing about our community, just they're just excited to educate you online and in person on, um, you know, design, simulation, manufacturing, data management, CAD admin, PD, PDM admin, and, and much, much more. So you can register today. You, you can register for both experiences, you know, online or in person at 3dexperienceworld.com. You can go there to learn more. The conference will be occurring this February, this upcoming February. So Make sure to plan your trip, get your tickets now, uh, especially if you plan on attending those hands-on sessions, like Peter said. And as we go to the outro here, we're going to play a little bit of a teaser uh, for what's to come there again as we kind of head out. And one more time before we go, I have to say it, you know, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you to our guest today, the team at Res Marketing team and, and our production team at Kramer. We will see you very soon. Take care.